if you are going to be in the paranormal field or you are a psychic medium, it is important to understand discernment. Especially when you come across different entities. So I'm going to give you five tips on how to use your discernment and anyway, here we go. Tip number one, go with your initial instincts or go with your initial bodily reaction to an entity. If you come across an entity, whether you're in a dream state, whether you're in, you know, astral projection or right here in the 3D earth realm. It is very important to go by how your body reacts first. If you feel fear, mm, probably not great. So it's kind of like how an animal instinctually perceives a threat. Don't focus too much on appearance just yet, especially for those entities who try to trick you by pretending to be something less threatening or more in innocent. Loved ones and benevolent beings will never make you feel any negative emotions because their vibration is so high that it will do the opposite. So, basically, loved ones or benevolent beings will make you feel loved. It'll feel like you're in a warm hug and there will be no question about whether or not they're good or bad because benevolent ones, they make damn sure that you feel comfortable and safe and loved and energized okay so questions that you should ask yourself how does the energy feel are you scared are you tense do you feel like fighting or fleeing do you feel sick do you feel drained tip number two pay attention to colors colors are everything and you can actually gain a lot of information based on colors so what do i mean so if you're at a point where you can see colors, whether you're, you know, on the ashram, astral projecting, or you're dreaming, or, you know, with your third eye and you're like awake on the 3D earth realm, right? You know, pay attention to color, especially the aura, right? You want to pay attention to the aura color. And um, also pay attention to the color of the spirit itself. Like look at its skin, eye color, stuff like that. So the thing is, black, gray, dark purple, dark or murky colored auras are a good indicator to be on the defense because it, it gives you information about the type of energy that the entity or spirit has. So a lot of earthbound spirits may come across as gray or grayish tones. And not all earthbound spirits are evil, however, one thing that all earthbounds do have in common is that they do need to take energy from the living. And so while they might not be diabolical, not all of them, um, it's still important to be cautious around them because even if they intend to or not, they're still going to absorb your energy. And well, that doesn't help you now, does it? So also other things to look at are like portals or door entries. If you know, you're know you astral projecting and you see portals, let's say you see a portal that's like pure white and then you see a portal or a door that's black and then you see a portal that's dark purple, mm, chances are I'd be staying away from the dark colored ones. Um, usually the white colored ones are good, but again, if you don't close those doors, uh, the white ones can turn into dark ones because the energies around can defile them. Plus other entities can defile them. But so yeah, it's always important to pay attention to that. And eye colors, um, I've noticed a correlation that, you know, blacked out eyes, yellow eyes, red eyes, usually aren't great. Now, you know, there are so many different species of entities, you know, it's important that when you compare, you know, the colors of things and the appearance, 
you also take note of the other things that I'm mentioning, okay? Tip number three, appearance. Now, while appearance isn't necessarily the most important thing due to the vastness of entities, like I've said, it is still important to pay attention to because, you know, there are some obvious signs of entities that are no good and you can tell just by how they look. You know, people are, they don't like to judge things without knowing the full story. I understand. However, a lot of entities, though, you can go by how they look on the outside. But, so, some examples like gargoyle or reptile-like um, entities, be cautious around. Not all reptile-like entities are evil. Like, for example, you do have the Naga, which are like a snake entity kind of thing that looks like a snake mixed with a person. Those are not necessarily evil. However, you get some gargoyle-looking things and they have like dark black skin, and glowing red eyes, chances are I wouldn't mess around with them. And, you know, also, you have to think about this. Entities that are overly attractive, or even children-looking entities or spirits, children's spirits do exist, yes. However, we all know how you know, negative entities, especially demonic ones, like to pose as children because they look less threatening. So always put your guard up when, you know, come across things that look like children. And the same thing with very good looking humanoid, you know, things. So if you have, let's say you're a female, right? And you come across a very attractive male spirit be on guard, especially if they're being overly friendly, because chances are, you know, the entity that they're trying to disguise themselves as, they're trying to trick you into doing things you don't want to do. And this is stuff that I have learned from experience, so don't think I just conjured all this stuff out of nowhere. Like, this is from experience. I've had male entities look very um, handsome and try to come to me and I'm like, mm, no thank you. Or, oh, another thing. They could come as people you may know. Always be on guard with that. Especially people that are alive and even deceased. But it's like, they'll try to look like someone familiar to you to get you to do stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's a trap. It's a trick. Don't fall for it. Sometimes, you know, you can have people that you're really close to that, like, for example, twin flames or soulmates or spirit comrades, friends that are also, you know, have the same abilities as you. You can meet them on the astral realm. Yes, that's possible. It happens to me all the time. But if you're someone that doesn't have that kind of group of people, be very cautious because again, other entities can shapeshift into whatever they want. And if they feel like you trust that person enough, they're going to try to trick you using their face. Make sure every aspect of that person is correct. Because oftentimes, when they try to put on someone else's face, they always get one little detail wrong. So... Yeah, pay attention to that. So here's a great example for that. One entity tried to pose as my fiance. Well, it didn't quite work on their end because I know my fiance like the back of my hand. And I remember like going in for a hug for that person and I felt their arm and you know, my fiance has a tattoo on his arm and you can feel it because of how the tattoo artist did it it's like you can still feel all the lines and stuff. And when I was hugging them, I touched their arm in that spot and I didn't feel that. And then I looked and the tattoo wasn't there. And I'm like, you're not my fiance. Nice try. And then they booped, they disappeared. So always pay attention to the details, especially for things that try to mimic other people that you may know. Tip number four, pay attention to behavior. 
Things of negative vibration may act in grotesque or sexual ways. Lie or try to convince you to do things you may not otherwise do. All right? Especially those that are very good looking or trying to pretend to be someone you know. So they may do things that purposely scare you in order to feed off of you. Obviously, when they do really fucked up shit, you'll know right off the bat that, oh, this thing's not good. But for the behavior that's a little more sneaky, you gotta pay attention to it. Because if the behavior they are doing or trying to get you to do is negative in any way, any way, if you have that pit in your stomach and you feel like, mm, I probably shouldn't do it, don't do it. So chances are they're trying to lower your vibration, but most importantly, they're trying to see how influenceable you are. It is a test that they do to see how much they can manipulate you and almost like a test drive to see how easy or hard it is so they can come up with a special strategy that fits the individual best. Lastly, if there is heavy emphasis on ego and or material things. So questions you need to, you know, ask yourself, are these actions negative in any way? Are the actions sexual in any way? Are they saying information that you know is incorrect? Do those actions scare you? Chances are they're no good. Tip number five, hearing low frequencies. So if you are hearing low frequencies or humming noises, be on guard. Naturally, negative things operate at a lower frequency. And so if you are someone with the skill of clear audience, now you might not necessarily have clear audience, but you know, sometimes you can hear ringing or, you know, it may be different, especially if you're on the astral realms. You know, sometimes your clear abilities kick in more than when you're, you know, on the 3D earth plane. But just use this as a guide here. So naturally negative things operate at a low frequency. And so if you are someone with the skill of clear audience, you will be able to hear the low frequencies being emitted from them. Depending on your clear audience skill level, you can hear the frequency in their voice. I can, for sure. So questions you need to ask. What do you hear? Do you hear high or low pitched ringing or hums? Do you question what the being is saying? If, for example, the being is saying information and you're like, mm, that don't feel right, probably is not right. Also, disclaimer, since we got through the five tips, be aware once you call them out, they may lash out at you. It's unfortunate, but you know, if they do lash out at you, that's great validation that they're negative beings because positive beings or benevolent beings or loved ones will not lash out at you. Plus, you know, the benevolent ones typically don't make you doubt whether they're good or not. They make pretty damn sure that you know for certain that they're good. And if you don't know for certain that they're good, chances are they're probably not. So hopefully you guys found this video, you know, useful. Guys, let me know if you know any other tips and tricks that will help with discernment that I missed. So if I miss any other tips, list them down below. I'm curious to see what you have to say. But thank you guys for watching and peace out. Curious about or new to astral projection? Check out my video about the astral realm and its potential dangers so you are well informed to keep yourself safe. Safety is and will always be my top priority on this channel.